Hello everyone, welcome back to my studio. It is time for my first ever sewing tutorial and I'm so excited. So welcome to a variety of different sewing tutorials on this channel. There will be a lot of different concepts, a lot of different inspiration and this specific one today is for glowing up the lazy way. Because well, we all have these days where we don't really feel like dressing up, but of course we wanna look nice. So today I'm gonna show you how to sew an elegant two-piece look. It's consisting of a long skirt and a top. Also, this sewing tutorial today is very beginner friendly. I would say it's a level one of five. Very easy and you should not have any difficulties following along. What's the first thing we need when it comes to sewing something? Of course, we're gonna start with the pattern pieces. So if you wanna work with these exact same pattern pieces that I am working with today, I already uploaded a bunch of different sizes onto my website. You can find the link down below in the description box. You can either download the print digitally and print it out yourself, or we can also ship you a printed version if that's easier for you. For this specific look, I've decided that I wanted to work with a more silky fabric or basically it's a very silky fabric and more on the heavier side. So I wanted the skirt to be more static and not as flowing. But of course it's up to you what color you pick and also what kind of weight of fabric you're choosing. I think this pattern works with heavier fabrics and also some lighter ones. First things first, let's cut out the pattern pieces and I'm gonna show you how. For the two garments we're gonna sew today, I'm gonna use the Lazy Daisy top pattern and also the Lazy Daisy skirt pattern. I'm quickly gonna put this away so we can have a look at the fabric. Very important, today we're gonna work on fold, which basically means that the pattern only involves half of the of the piece and what you do then is you fold the fabric if you work with a light fabric like me you can only pin your pattern piece within the seam allowance this is very important because the pins will leave marks on the light fabric and of course we don't want that to be visible I'm also gonna make sure to use just a bit less pins, um, really just the ones that I really need to fixate the piece onto the fabric and so that I have an easier time cutting it out. As you can see here, this is the salvage. On the pattern pieces, I mark the grain line and the grain line has to be parallel to the salvage. Just make sure that you cut it out the right way. It's very easy, but of course you've got to know that. So first pattern piece is cut. I'm gonna repeat the same procedure with all the other pattern pieces. There's not really much you can do wrong. It's just really important that you um, put the grain line into the right direction um, parallel to um, the cell edge, but that's basically it. For the skirt, the front and the back piece are exactly the same, at least with my pattern. Um, like I said, this is a beginner's tutorial, so of course I'm gonna keep it as easy as possible and it has a nice fit, just with no darts, very straight. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it on fold as well, but this time I don't have to take care of the edge. I'm just gonna cut it double, so um, that's done. It's a bit easier. Oh my god, this fits onto the fabric perfectly, but if it would just be a centimeter bigger, that would be it. That is some 
great eye measuring right there because I didn't buy an excessive amount of fabric. <laughs> well, there's there's something still there, but um, I'm happy if I've got a bit of um, spare fabric for future pieces, maybe. Oh well. Make sure to buy enough fabric. If you've cut everything like me, you should end up with two skirt pieces, the front piece cut on fold, the facing of the front, then the back piece and the facing, and then also these two strap pieces for the top. Everything is cut, so we're gonna start sewing tomorrow and also I think I just cannot film anymore for today because my my neighbors are having a huge party and it sounds like a fun fair <laughs> And I don't want to get um, demonetized for additional music added through my lovely neighbors. Um, but yeah, it's it's their birthday, which is really cute. They should celebrate. Also, it's late already. I'm tired. I'm gonna I'm gonna start sewing tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Today is sewing day. I'm so excited. I I just can't believe that I'm finally sewing garments again for myself. It's been a couple of years. Actually, it's been like probably like 10 years at this point. I haven't sewn a looks or garments for myself for 10 years, only just for either shows or photo shoots or in general um, for other people. I'm really glad that I'm finally finding the time again to sew garments um, just for myself. And of course, I'm so glad that I can share it as well and upload patterns so other people, if they like what I'm doing, they can sew it as well and have the same clothing. And also, you can't forget about the sustainability aspect. That's quite nice that um, people have the options to sew their own garments. Basically es escaping um, the fashion industry and how things are produced. I'm just gonna finish my breakfast and then I'm gonna head downstairs um, straight to the studio and start sewing. Let's start sewing. I forgot one important part, which was to buy um, some matching sewing thread for this specific fabric. But I mean, I look at um, all the ones that are in my studio already. And I mean, I've got some promising colors. So let's just hope that uh, one of them matches perfectly. If you go out to buy some fabric, I think you should also buy some matching thread that's, you know, a, a matching color of thread. The first thing we have to start with are the darts in the front. So for closing the darts, you go back and take your front pattern piece, you lay it on top of your cut fabric piece, on the side seams where the dart is, you should make two notches. Notches are in general very important because they mark where your fabric pieces need to match up. In this specific case, what I do is I pin these two notches together on top of each other so I know where I need to start sewing. And I also mark the tip of the dart with just a pin. I then fold it and kind of look at where the fabric wants to go and kind of like fold it into a straight line. So once I see that the fabric folds kind of flat between these two pins, I just add another one in the middle of these two. If you're a, a total beginner and you have a hard time sewing into a straight line without marking it, I highly recommend taking a ruler and just marking a straight line from the last pin that basically marks where the dart ends and where your notches are. I've 
close the darts and I already pressed it with the iron. So you have to press the seam allowance from the darts toward the bottom. So that's what I did. Oh, the fabric looks really great. In the, can you see that in the pink light? Oh, that's so nice. I like that. Oh well, let's continue. So I'm looking more towards a frayed look. So we're gonna leave the top part more frayed or I mean, we're gonna finish it with some top stitching, but I want it to be open. In general, I'm wondering if I want the side seams to be undone and fraying as well, just for it to add to the look and to the whole concept of the garment. But I think we can, I think we should overlock them anyway. So that's what we're gonna do. When it comes to overlocking things, we can overlock everything in one go. Um, once we close the darts, there's nothing to prepare um, before overlocking. So I'm taking my, my front piece, my back piece of the top, and also my two pieces from the skirt, and we're gonna overlock the side seams. Don't worry if you don't have an overlock machine. I even have just, just a domestic one. Uh, some domestic sewing machines have a zigzag stitch or you can also either hand stitch it or, you know, some people leave it open and just undone. Which is fair if you don't produce clothing professionally and you're just doing it for yourself and you're just kind of beginning like why should you get all the machines in one go but like i said feel free to use the zigzag stitch on your domestic sheen i'm gonna use my domestic overlock because that's um, good enough for this and yeah let's do this I don't know about you guys, but refreading the overlock is probably the most terrifying thing out there when it comes to sewing garments. Honestly, I don't even know why I'm doing this to myself. I think in the future I should just design clothing that doesn't need an overlock machine. However, by the dust you can tell that I'm not using it that much anyway. I guess that's also the reason why it's just a domestic overlock. I believe it because I'm I'm not a huge fan of the finishing, but for this specific garment, it makes sense for the seam allowance to lay inside the garment very flat. So that's when the overlock comes in quite handy. So that's when I'm also pretty happy that at least the domestic one is here. side seams are overlocked now. I also overlocked the facing, at least the bottom of um, the front and the back piece of the top. I was thinking about um, leaving it um, with a top stitch as well and fraying it, but um, now that the overlock machine is completely threaded in the, in the right color, I thought, okay, let's just um, overlock that to its inside. It would have just been a nice detail. Um, a nice design detail in there, but since inside, um, well, there's nothing wrong with overlocking it. So I've done that. The next thing we have to do is close the side seams of the skirt and top. Seam allowance is one centimeter, so um, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin the side seams, all four of them together in one go, and then we're on to the hemming of the top and also the skirt. For closing the side seams, I'm gonna start with the top. So I lay out the front piece with the left side um, towards the table and the right side on top. And then basically what you do is the nice side, the right side should be inside of the, of the garment right now and the left side should be outside. Make sure to match the seam correctly then I'm gonna start pinning it. Remember if you've got a light fabric like me, it's very smart to only pin within the seam allowance so the pins don't leave any stains behind once you pull them out. Also 
don't pin things too much just really where it's necessary for example i'm definitely gonna pin down the um the seam allowance from the dart so that goes downwards towards the bottom same thing for the other side of course so i'm just gonna pin that real quick and then basically the same thing with the skirt you lay both pieces on top of each other make sure that the um, ends meet up of both of the pieces you pin it and then we're gonna sew the top side seams and also the skirt side seams got some flowers isn't that cute so beautiful so I've closed the side seams and already pressed them apart so can you see how flat the seams are that's basically because you press them apart like this all the way through from the top to the bottom with the iron and then um, the seam is really flat and nice. So, the side seam is closed. Now we need to go and do the hem. Next step for the bottom of the top and also for the bottom of the skirt is the hem. So how the hem works is, I'm gonna show you here on the skirt pieces. So, I'm just gonna open it up so you can see the inside. So for the hem, you fold it half a centimeter, which is um, five millimeters. And then you fold it another five millimeters and that gives you a really nice small hem. Um, to make it a bit easier, you should press it. So what I do is I take my measuring tape. Um, whenever I fold something, I measure if it's exactly five millimeter, press it with the iron for the first time all the way around. And then I go for the second round where I fold it another time, the second time, measure that again, all the way around and press it with the iron too. And then I go stitch it and then I go back to the iron and um, make sure that the hem is nice and flat and press that once more to finish it. So, like I said, you should do this for the bottom of the skirt and also for the bottom of the top. This is what it's supposed to look like. When you stitch down the hem, it's very important to um, make sure that it's just one millimeter next to the edge. That's how you stitch it down. This is probably the hardest part of the sewing tutorial, so once that's done, congratulations, you've um, just finished the most crucial part of it. If you are a total beginner, don't worry, In just when you're starting off, um, it's not that unusual that you have to do um, certain seams over and over again. So you have to unpick it and then start it again and tr give it another try if it works better. I'm just gonna clean it up a bit. So all the short threads hanging out, I'm just gonna give them a quick trim. But so far it looks really good and I just love the flowers, they're so beautiful. And it just I know it gives the studio a different feeling, <laughs> which is kind of nice. So, now that the bottom part is done and that I pressed it down, so you have a really nice and flat hem down there, we're gonna put the top to the side for now and gonna finish the skirt, especially the top, since it's still 
open. So the way we're gonna finish it is we're gonna put an elastic in there. What you need is a two centimeter elastic um, that goes around your hip a bit above um, the widest parts of your hip, kind of like, like five centimeters below your belly button. That's where it needs to go. So make sure you don't um, cut it too short, otherwise it's a bit too tight. On my pattern there is a specific measurement written down for the elastic, so you know wh where to cut it for your specific size. And um, I'm gonna show you how you sew it into the skirt now. So I cut the elastic already. And now what we have to do is pretty similar to the hem. We have to press it first to create the tunnel for the elastic. Press it at one centimeter first. And then we're gonna add maybe like three millimeters. So one centimeter first and then the tunnel should have a thickness in total of 2.8 centimeters. So let's prepare that first and then I'm going to show you how you sew um, the elastic in. I just pressed it, so you've got it right there. It's... Uh, uh, struggle. Right, so you've got the 2.8 centimeters right here and when you open it up there is the one centimeter I pressed down. This creates the tunnel that we need to put the elastic in. So how does it work? You take the elastic, like I said, the measurements for um, the right length you need is written down onto the pattern you can buy on my website. I fold it into half and with a pin I mark the middle of the elastic, right there. What I then do is I choose one of the side seams of the skirt that we did earlier and I pin the middle of the elastic right onto the side seam. So this is step number one. What you do now is you basically stitch from these 2.8 centimeters, you stitch it down. Make sure you go over it at least twice, maybe even three times because there's quite a lot of tension on this point where you sew it down. So you want to make sure it's sewn down properly and it's not gonna come undone. So I'm gonna go to my um, sewing machine and stitch it down now. So you've got it right here. I'm gonna turn it around, gonna st stitch it from this side and take out the needle so we don't ruin our sewing machine. Make sure to hold it where we've just pinned it. Right, gonna put it under the sewing machine and stitch right onto the shadow of the seam, which did before. So what is the next step? The next step is that we need to close the elastic. So you remember how we've sewn the center of the elastic length down onto the fabric. Now we need to close the other two ends on the side. So I make sure that they're not twisted or turned around. Put both ends on top of each other. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you right here. We're gonna stitch right here. Seam allowance is one centimeter and then what happens next is we're gonna close the tunnel of the fabric. Great, so now that it's done we're gonna finish the tunnel. Good that I've pressed everything down so I know exactly where to stitch. So what you're gonna do is you... I'm gonna put that right here on the table. Basically you fold it back just the same way you pressed it before with the one centimeter and then the 2.8. So from the inside, you're gonna sew it down now the tunnel. Make sure that you don't sew the elastic um, right into the seam. It needs to be a bit more loose and moving in there. So you just stitch down the fabric and the elastic um, sits a bit 
more behind it. That's why we added three millimeters additionally to the thickness of the elastic. Take your time with that. I think when it comes to sewing the elastic in, I rather check twice with my fingers if the elastic gets caught in the space where I need to um, make the seam. And I just stop like while I'm sewing, taking breaks, touch the next few centimeters I'm going to sew and make sure that the elastic is nowhere near um, the seam. All right, skirt is done. I already tried it on and it looks fabulous. So excited to try everything on together and um, just wear it somewhere nice. Where am I even going? Like, it's not like, it's not like I'm working 24 seven at the moment. Like, ha, of course I can wear it somewhere nice. Well, I guess I'm gonna make time for it so I can wear it out and have a, have a great day. Let's continue with the top so this gets done. So the last things missing are the straps and the facing. The next thing in line then is to work on the straps. So if you look at the pattern, um, I made them a bit longer than necessary basically because all of our bodies are different. So some of us need a bit more length because the torso is a bit longer or some of us need them to be a bit shorter because um, they're in general um, not that tall in height. We've got the straps here and making them is actually fairly easy. You look at the strap, you fold it into half, so you press it with the iron and that leaves a mark which is basically the line that marks the center of the strap and what you then do is you take each of the edges and you fold it right next to the line we created in the center so you do that on both sides so basically it looks like a bias tape and once that is done you fold it another time both of the folded edges on top of each other and press it once more We've then gonna stitch it right next to the edge with just a millimeter next to it. And then your straps are prepared as well. I'll take it back what I said before, the straps are the hardest part to sew. Even me, I needed a second try with the left strap. It just didn't look right. So as you can see, I already marked out the length. I tried it on and then just pins the straps with the right length that I needed. So I'm gonna put the straps and the main top to the side now because we need to prepare the facing. So usually what you would do is, of course, close the side seam. We're gonna do the same thing here, but usually you would um, do the same thing as with the, the main top. You have um, the seam allowance inside on, on the wrong side. But since we're gonna put the facing um, half a centimeter up and leave it open to fray, we actually need to do it the other way around. We need to have the seam allowance towards the nice shiny side. So I'm gonna pin the, the wrong sides on top of each other and I'm gonna close the side seams of the facing. Seam allowance is once again one centimeter that hasn't changed. Let me come over here and I show you what I mean by we're gonna put it on the wrong side. So as you can see, I pinned it the other way around. This is the side that's usually on the inside and that's facing each other now. So we're gonna have the seam and the seam allowance on a nice shiny side. But please follow along. This has a reason and I'm gonna show you in a minute. So I've closed the side seam now and pressed it down so it's nice and flat. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to our top and put the facing inside. 
For important, usually you would actually hide the seam now and completely finish it. We want to leave it open this time and have a fraying effect to add a bit more texture. And very important, so we need to hide the seam allowance here. I'm actually gonna trim that a bit so we just have five millimeter of a seam allowance so it's not that bulky either and we want to hide that so make sure that the seam allowance is nice and flat on both pieces and then you put the side seams of the facing and the main top on top of each other they need to face each other pin that down and then I'm gonna see like makes it light it out nice and flat. I'm gonna pin that as well. So this is what it should look like at the end. Your facing is going across the front and the back and it peeks out a little bit. And what I also did is I put the measured straps, basically the measure to your length. Um, I put them between the facing and the main top so in, in this case the front piece but also same as in the back piece it's sandwiched between um, the back and the front piece and the facing so once it's looking like this you are ready to go and stitch it down I did not trim the ends of the straps yet because I want to try it on first and make sure that it has the right length and in the worst case I can still um, undo the seam and make it a bit longer or a bit shorter. So now that we need to stitch it down, these stitches need to be done very neatly because they are visible and these are some top stitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch five millimeter next to the first edge and then once again right next to the first seam a second seam also five millimeter apart from the first seam we did or a whole centimeter next to the fraying edge you have right there i'm going to show you in a minute um, this is the last step you have to do because we're almost finished but yeah let's see how that goes <laughs> I've just sewn the last seam and I cut the straps. Isn't this amazing? I finished the top and the skirt today. That's so cool. Oh my god. Finally clothing for myself. Oh well. Should we should we try it on? I guess we should. So let me get undressed and put this baby on and then we're gonna see what it looks like. Also, if you made it this far into the video, I think you should consider subscribing to my channel. I'm gonna upload more sewing tutorials in the future and also some other fun videos. So it's definitely worth um, subscribing. It doesn't cost anything, so why not? This is just perfect for me, exactly what I've been hoping for. It's super comfortable, the silky fabric feels like as if I'm wearing a pyjama. And I mean, that's literally the goal. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't look like pyjamas, it actually looks really nice, I think. So, I'm definitely gonna wear this. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel, follow me on social media, and I see you in the next video.